Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternities, a top 10 uh, Star Trek episodes that I hate that everyone else loves. Uh, in this video I will count down 10 episodes that I feel through reviews or comments and just stuff I've seen everywhere online or in person. Uh, and also going to IMDb and looking at the rated episodes, episodes that people tend to speak highly of or has been not necessarily awesome or amazing, but sometimes, yes, awesome and amazing. Sometimes, oh, it's a very good episode. Oh, it's decent. It's a solid episode. Where I think this episode's terrible. <laughs> I think it's not a decent episode. I don't think it's certainly not a great episode. It is an extremely bad episode and some of the worst that a uh, Star Trek franchise has ever produced. So this is kind of like a companion piece to my my top 10 uh, most overrated episodes of Star Trek. Um, however, in the case of the overrated, and I mentioned in that episode, that video, that was for specifically episodes that people, that I liked, but people ranked a bit too highly, thought were like the best of the show, where I thought, wait, hold on. I mean, it's good, but it's not that good. Whereas, so this is different than that. This is more of, no, I think this episode's complete, utter, garbage other dumpster fire garbage and uh some people seem to like it or think it's not that bad or think it's amazing or i think it's absolute garbage now <laughs> and again uh i'm kind of going against the majority opinion is similar to the overrated list so it is in that same vein i'm a bit more passionate though <laughs> on this one uh but yes it's watch at your at your risk at your own risk because yes i am going to be giving out unpopular opinions which is the whole point of this video so you may find yourself disagreeing with me but that's what this video is for for me to express my opinion and uh name some of these star trek episodes that i feel uh are terrible yet somehow some way people love them now i uh doing it in a ranking form in form of a top 10 um, sort of factoring how much the episode is loved and how much I hate it and the further those go apart the more it's loved and the more I hate it is the higher the episode's gonna get <laughs> on this countdown so <clears throat> as I said like loving it is uh generally speaking I'm sure a lot of people watching this will be like well I don't like that episode either which it's fair, and a lot of these episodes I'm really passionate about, I have found a lot of people that agree with me. So it's not a blanket statement, but in general, the general consensus of what I've seen a lot of reviews or, or some really high, highly rated on IMDb and stuff like that, highly usually has this episode a lot higher than I think it has any right to be. So, <laughs> let me go ahead and uh, get into my list, but let me start, of course, with a couple of honorable mentions that didn't quite make my top 10. First honorable mention is Unimatrix Zero from Voyager. Kind of a spoiler for my list, but there will be similar episodes to that on this list that I think that I feel more strongly about, which is why this is only an honorable mention. I haven't seen that much love for this episode online but i've seen some and it is fairly highly rated on uh, imdb this of course is the borg two-parter where there was a unimatrix zero whatever i don't know the whole plot was pointless and it featured the borg queen who, which i can't stand so <laughs> i thought there was a terrible two-parter uh next i will mention Turning to Voyager again, which actually Voyager kind of dominates my list. Just a little bit of a spoiler for that. I guess I disagree with people most on Voyager. But anyway, next honorable mention is Future's End from Season 3. Now look, this is only an honorable mention because I don't... Hate is a strong word. I don't know if I go as far to absolutely say I hate this episode. I certainly don't have as strong feelings about it as I do with some of these other episodes like you know matrix zero and some of the other ones that will you'll find higher on my list but i don't think it's a good episode 
And uh, it's a lot of people s- tend to sing these praises. Like almost always, people will will name this episode in a positive light, mention it as one of their twenty favorites, or, or argue with me of why season three is actually not terrible. Be like, whoa, Future's End is a good two parter. It's actually not. The <laughs> the time travel logic in it is nonsensical. The humor is like was outdated when it first aired. I remember watching it when it first aired, and it seemed like really cheesy and and not really portraying how the 90s actually were and not how people actually talked and it just seemed goofy and the villain was just flat out goofy and ridiculous and silly um so yeah and the time travel logic i made zero sense did i not mention that and <laughs> so um no uh, i don't think this is a good episode at all Hello, it's Editing Mark here. Uh, So I had finished, actually completed this video and had it saved in uh, the archives ready to go when I realized um, I forgot to mention an episode. (laughs) Now I'm just going to throw it in here as the third honorable mention because uh, really I would probably place that at like number six or seven on my list, but I don't want to have to redo this whole video (laughs) and restructure it. um, But I did want to talk about it because I did forget this episode so i'm just going to throw it in here as the honorable mention and that is uh the voyager episode course oblivion um this i think i've seen a lot of love for this episode um and a, and a lot of people really praise it and put it in uh top tens i think i missed it because it wasn't rated that highly on imdb and that's how i was reminding myself of episodes other people loved is by searching imdb and it wasn't i think it's more middling on imdb but i've heard like so many people like praise this episode and, and say it was really good or, or at least saying it was pretty good i don't like it at all because I think it is one of the most pretentious episodes of um, Voyager, uh, or maybe even Star Trek. Really, it's it's I I feel the whole ending kind of ruined the episode for me. So first off, I got to point out. So this is the episode that's about like we follow the Voyager crew as they all like die and fall apart, but we realize they're just like the duplicates of Voyager we met in the Demon episode. Problem is this whole entire structure of this episode is based off of a giant plot hole because and uh when i went back and watched the episode demon i noticed that voyager left and all they had duplicates of the entire crew but they were on the planet with no ship they duplicated the crew not the ship so this is literally a spaceship size plot hole (laughs) because they shouldn't have a ship and in this episode they have a ship with a better slipstream drive and in fact they're like on their way home um before they realize who they really are and the other thing is is that they knew they were of the demon planet like the Tom Paris and the, the Harry Kim duplicates knew they were from the Demon Planet. So, uh, I don't understand. Like, it just makes no sense, first of all. So, the whole premise of the episode is is uh, a giant, based on a plot hole, which to me is a huge knock against it. I'm not willing to sort of just forgive it for that. But, that's not really the main reason why I didn't like this episode. Um, I actually could have liked this episode a bit more. Maybe thought it was okay or fairly decent. If it had a decent ending. But I think the ending was... This is where the pretension comes in. Because the ending came up as the writer is trying to be like... Super, super dark. And like, ooh, isn't this so ironic and dark? Ah, like Kind of like The Outer Limits. Except it doesn't work. Here, I don't know if it's just because of Voyager, but it just felt very nihilistic and empty, and I felt like I'm worse off for watching this episode. Not just that I did it waste my time because it actually didn't mean anything, but the whole point is how empty and meaningless everything and how tragic this is, and I think they went overboard. So how I would fix the ending, because in the end, they were they were all dying, and there was only a few survivors left, and they were trying to find Voyager, and they were just found Voyager, but then the ship was destroyed right when they didn't, so Voyager just comes across debris and doesn't even know what it is. It's not 
that so ironic? No, I think it's pretentious. Uh, what, how, what I think could have saved this episode is if the ship actually did find Voyager at this time, but oh, there was only a few people left alive, like Harry Kim and Seven of Nine, and they came aboard Voyager, and Voyager tried to save them, but they failed, and they died anyway, and then the ship exploded, uh, and then, uh, but see, but the, so this way, they could have, it still would have been a tragic ending, it still would have been the Voyager, you would see these demon people trying to survive but failing so you keep that but it would be more meaningful to me because our main characters would be involved they would be touched they would be affected by this like harry kim could see his duplicate die and 709 could see his, her duplicate die and we could see the impact that this would have on our crew and uh so that way it would be meaning because they would be remembered and people would know who they were and they could maybe spend a scene or two talking about how this affected you know the members of our crew like harry Combe could be really shaken up by this and that way i you would keep the tragic feeling it would still be a sad tragic episode but it wouldn't seem so pretentious nihilistic to me uh, and it would actually give the episode meaning because I I care about our main characters and our main characters would be affected by this. Therefore, I would care about this episode since they you know went for the super ironic ending where they died and our main characters never met them. What the fuck do I care about? I don't care about these are stupid demon uh, duplicates. You shouldn't have a ship in the first place. <laughs> um, and uh, they die in space while try to get the Voyager, but the Voyager crew never finds out. So why do I care? Answer: I don't. I don't care. It just makes me feel mad at these writers for trying to be pretentious and being. Look, if I want to watch an episode where the Voyager crew are like dying off in dire straits, I'll watch Year of Hell, because that's a much, much, much better episode. I know people might make the argument, well, that's not our real crew anyway. It's an alternate timeline. Yeah, but there's alternate versions of our crew from a different timeline. It's what would have happened if they encountered the Krenman or whatever. So it is our crew where these demons duplicates are not our crew <laughs> they are duplicates of the demon thing so i don't really care how they die um i don't know <laughs> that's just the way i look at it but i never liked this episode um and i'm surprised that people do so now let me get into my top 10 uh star trek episodes i hate that everyone else loves and we'll start with my number 10 carbon creek now, this only comes in at number 10 because um, I've loosened my hatred for this episode. I, I used to really hate this episode, but I watched it again and gave it a shot because I always try to give be fair and give every episode a shot, even ones I've already seen and not come in with my prejudgmental things. And I've done is there were some good aspects to this episode. I will admit some of the character stories was somewhat interesting. But, yeah, people, this is rated, like, on IMDb, it's, like, in the top 20 of Enterprise episodes, maybe even top 10, if I remember correctly, and I've constantly hear people uh, talk, say great things about this episode. It's the one when they went back into the, well, they didn't go back, uh, T'Pol was telling a story of our ancestors, Vulcan ancestors who visited the Earth um, in a mining town in Pennsylvania in the 50s, and it really, really glorifies the 50s. And that's what I hated about Enterprise most. Like, even when it wasn't taking place in the 50s, the whole bullshit with movie night and just the whole way everyone act like they were from Leave It to Beaver. Like, I hated that aspect of Enterprise. So this episode kind of accentuated that what I hated most about the show, well, one of the things I hated, there was a lot <laughs> about the first two seasons, but it accentuated a lot of the worst aspects of the show, in my opinion, and most particularly was its glorifying of the 50s. Absent in this episode, of course, was the discrimination and racism that existed and sexism that existed in the 50s. I just plum forgot to include that in this episode uh, and instead glorified, oh, look at how great the 50s were. Anyway, Anyway, and that pissed me off. And the whole concept of T'Pol telling a story about her ancestors visiting Earth, that's boring. I don't want to hear that. that I, I, I really have no interest in this episode. I don't think it's good. So, um, let me get into um, 
My number nine, which is this side of paradise from Star Trek, the original series. I don't know if I'd say this episode is completely beloved or it's, it's not like one the people say is one of the best episodes that ever, but I have seen a lot of praise and positive reviews for this episode. It is, I believe, in the top 20 or at least 25 on IMDb of the original series episodes. And uh, it sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, the whole episode is a PSA. It's like a reefer madness thing. Is the whole thing is a PSA about why not to do marijuana? It was the whole like thought behind it, and it's more akin to like LSD because it shows Spock like looking at the clouds and being like, "Look, there's a dog or something." But anyway. <laughs> Um, it, it is definitely an analogy for drugs and a very, 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 very bad one. A very bad one. A reefer madness level bad one. Uh, so that's why it takes a really big hit for me. Like, I love the episode Symbiosis, even though there's a very obvious, hey kids, don't do drugs PSA. But that had a lot more nuance to me, and I, I don't think it at least portrayed drug addiction accurately, which this episode fucking does not. Uh, <laughs> and so I actually didn't mind it in that episode, even though there was an obvious PSA in that, but it's the episode itself was actually good and it portrays some nuance and some drug addiction in realistic light which this episode does not plus it has some really ridiculous dumb moments like occur uh, these flowers plants to shoot these spores that make these people like you know high and want to live on the planet and apparently like Kirk was just wandering around the Enterprise and this power flower like pops up out of nowhere and goes boom <laughs> which is a Dumbest thing I've ever seen is like up there in the top 10 stupidest moments of the original series, and that's a feat considered this is the original series I'm talking about here. So, yeah, the, the subplot was Spock and his love interest was somewhat interesting, particularly when he had to, when he snap back to his real self and he had to say goodbye to her that actually was a touching scene but that does not make this a good episode the episode overall uh sucks anyway <laughs> so next episode on my list of episodes i hate that everyone else loves is uh a fistful of datas i learned this early on because many years ago i did the top 10 uh, tng episodes and at the start of that video i included my top five worst this is in my top five worst and boy howdy did i hear about it that i get so much disagreement and my sister actually did a couple of worst lists where she put um this episode on and she also heard about it in the comments people tend to like this episode now look i have a bias against westerns i will flat out say that first of all and i personally though i think people who do like this episode have a bias for westerns which is the only reason why they like it because the episode's not good but i have a bias against westerns so that does sort of distance me from it but Here's the thing, when I was watching this episode, again, trying to objectify, trying to not prejudge it, I was like, this is, it was actually started out good. It, was, it started out as a good character story about Worf taking his son on the holodeck and bonding with his son. And it would have been a good episode had they continued that story. But instead, they went with this ridiculous thread of the week, boring storyline where Data's images put, gets put all over the holodeck and it has the speed of the android and they all try to kill him and Brent Spiner does some ridiculous acting uh, in this episode. So that, that torpedoed it for me. It was just this it was just a ridiculous dumb episode. I don't know why people would like it. Oh, because they're biased towards Westerns. Anyway. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh next on my list is um Choose Your Pain from Star Trek Discovery. Now Discovery gets a lot more hate than it deserves in general, although I still don't think it's like a masterpiece or anything. It has a lot of issues, and I've always been willing to admit that. But within the people who do like Discovery, or even some who aren't that big on Discovery, gave this episode a lot of praise. I remember watching some reviews and people to you know, torturing Discovery and tortur uh, torturing it and just... Um, roasting it and then this episode came out oh, this episode's okay this was easily the worst episode of the first season possibly the worst episode of the entire 
show. Uh, it was on. It was on my worst list for the modern track, worst modern track episodes. Uh, so first, this episode introduced Harry Mud, which is a character I never liked and don't want to see again. Um, and it did it in a ridiculous way with this prison Klingon prison storyline, in which. <coughs> Yeah, but the real reason why I <coughs> hate this episode so much is because Saru tortures a sentient being and everyone seems okay with it. In fact, the, the Admiral uh, like um, chastises Stamets for like putting the genetic material of this tardigrade, but says nothing about the fact that fucking Saru... First of all, he's portrayed as incompetent in this episode, which I hate how they portrayed him. I, I like him as a character, what they did with him later, but it, it, his character really suffered from the character assassination of this episode. And then there was a tardigrade that was a sentient life form. It was clearly a sentient life form. It was a respectable life form that they were subjecting to painful torture almost to the point of killing it on a Starfleet vessel, and nobody had an issue with that. Bullshit. Bullshit. So, <laughs> and I can't, and this was in the top 20 of best episodes on IMDb of Discovery, where it should be in the top 20 worst. Top 10 worst. Top 5 worst, I think. Anyway, <laughs> next on my list is uh, Equinox Part 2. Now, to be fair, a lot of times when people praise Equinox, they lump the episodes together part one and two and i'm focusing specifically on part two because part one was actually pretty good it was a fairly decent episode uh as problem main biggest problem is is that it fed into part two which was a fucking disaster um so there's a whole thing with the doctor and how they remove his uh, ethical subroutines and he turns into a maniac that starts torturing 709, which makes zero sense because all they did was remove his ethical subroutines. All of a sudden, he's loyal to Ransom, which makes zero sense. What he should have done is actually killed and tortured Ransom because he's still 709's friend and he's still loyal to her, so that makes zero sense and that was stupid. And then you have the whole plot with Janeway turning into a madman that is talking about character assassination uh she's literally like torturing people and killing people when jacote rightfully tries to stop her he relieves her of duty and nothing becomes of this and when tuvok tries to stop her later on he tr he threatens to relieve him of duty she should have been relieved of duty and then at the end of the episode they kind of laugh it off like ho, 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 like it's no big deal and plus they did a huge character swap where at the end of part one they clearly implied that ransom's uh, was the evil one and his first officer was having doubt and then all of a sudden at the start of episode part two as uh, Ransom's first officer who was evil and Ransom himself was having doubts was as absolutely not what they were establishing uh, so it was a, one of the worst written part twos in all of Star Trek well there's dissent but everyone agrees on that one people for some reason think that this is good it's not anyway <clears throat> <laughs> yes, this is also in the top 20 or 30 on Voyager. <sighs> so, let me get into my top 5 now. Episodes I hate everyone else seems to love. Number 5, Take Me Out to the Hollow Suites. Now, this one in particular I've recently seen on a lot of top 10 lists of, of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> um, uh, and on IMDb, it is fairly high, highly rated. I think it's in the top 30 or 40. Um... And this episode's terrible. Terrible. Now, I remember, like, decades ago, like, around the early 2000s, I'm like, going on some Star Trek message boards, and I trashed this episode, named as one of the worst. And like, so many people were fighting back against me, and one person, I always remember this, one person said, Whoa, why do you hate this episode? Were you picked last for a baseball team or something? First of all, I was always picked second. <laughs> and second of all... Who cares? What That has absolutely nothing to do with my hatred of this episode. Uh, whether I picked first, second, last, that was the... What the hell does that have to do with the episode? Absolutely nothing. This episode sucks. <laughs> like, I don't care that it's about baseball. Although I do kind of have a bias against movies and stories about baseball. I'm not interested in baseball, so I'm not interested in stories and movies about it. But... 
that doesn't mean I'm automatically going to hate this episode. Like, I actually thought it, it could have been an interesting episode. It could have been a good episode with that explored uh, Cisco's character. But instead, like, the character assassinated the Vulcan, something that would carry on to Enterprise. And um, they just turned it into a very cliche, you know, bad news bears ripoff where Odo is, everyone's acting silly for no reason. Odo's in his office going, safe, which is stupid. And um, the whole thing where Cisco gets in Odo's face was was dumb. And the whole point of it, oh, they're all cheering because Rom, they're not going to let him play, and they let him play, and they, even though they lose horribly, they still cheer. Like, who, like, they just did something very cliche. And by the way, now a lot of people have pointed this out, and I completely agree. The Dominion should have come by and blew up the station while they were fucking around playing baseball. There's a war on! Anyway, and that speaks to my larger issue with Season 7 of DS9, that they should have been more focused on the war. That entire season should have been serialized, not just the last ten episodes. My humble... Anyway, <laughs> and we certainly didn't need crap like this. So, uh, <laughs> let me get into my number four uh, episode I hate that a lot of people seem to love, and that is Endgame from Voyager. Now, anyone familiar with my channel knows how much I hate Endgame, the finale, final episode of Voyager, and it would take me too long to get into so many reasons as, yes, these reasons are numerous. Uh, I actually made an hour and a half video <laughs> outlining all the reasons why this episode is one of the worst episodes ever made. And is definitely the worst finale of all time, of any show, ever. Not just Star Trek, Seinfeld, Quantum Leap, uh, ALF, whatever you want to say. Nothing is worse. Lost Game of Thrones. Oh my god, I would even say it's worse than Game of Thrones. Fuck, that is a huge statement. It is the worst series finale ever, 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 ever. And the fact that people point to uh, a, f a different series finale as being the worst Star Trek ever done, one that I'm going to talk about in another video I do where episodes everyone else hates that I think are okay, the Enterprise finale, which wasn't like one hundredth of a, as bad as this episode, uh, it was fine, but I, I'll get to that in another video, as I said, but this was a total ball of shit. Uh, and a lot of people put it in their top 10s. I've seen this in so many top 10s. I think it's in the top 20 on IMDb. Um, and I've seen a lot of people specifically call this out as, uh, yeah, like even my sister was like, oh, this episode's just mediocre. No, it's not. It's a giant ball of shit. <laughs> and, um, to be fair, the reason why it's only number four, um, and not, uh, number one, because it's probably one of my most hated episodes of the whole franchise, is because there is a significant amount of people who agree with me. I've not even, I'm not just talking about people who commented on my videos personally to voice their agreement, and there have been a lot, uh, but also other videos, uh, other opinions outside of mine, like other YouTube videos and other articles and other things that also admit that this episode is terrible. So, because of that, even though it is loved way more than it should be, because as I said, it still appears in a lot of top 10s, and it's still in the top 29 DB, even though it's a minority opinion, there seems to be a sizable group of people who see this episode for the piece of crap that it is. So that's why this is only number four on my list. So next, um, we will get into my number three uh, episode that I hate that everyone else seems to love. And that is Bada Bing Bada Bang. Now... This is another episode, by the way, where the Dominion should have blew up the station while they were fucking around when there was a war on. But anyway, that's not the main reason why I hate it. And here's the thing. I haven't seen that many people, unlike Take Me Out to the Hollow Suites or in game, I haven't seen that many people who put this in their top ten and said this is one of the best episodes ever. But the reason why this ranks higher uh, than those other episodes, even though there's not that much love for this episode it's because there's not enough hate for this episode i don't know if i know of anyone outside of 
uh, my sister <laughs> and some of my fellow um, YouTube uh, followers, who've channel subscribers, I should say, and uh, Patreon supporters, particularly Brandon Howells, who I know also despises this episode. Outside of that, that my inner circle there, there's very few people I know that hate this episode, and the majority of people would to say this episode's fine. They've rated it as fairly good in the sort of upper echelon, like in the top 80 or top 100 of Deep Space Nine episodes. Oh, it's a decent episode. It's good. It's fun. That's the word I heard a lot. Fun. And if you watch my review for that episode, you'll see me rant and yell about how it is not fun <laughs> repeatedly because it's not fun. It is a shallow, hollow, cliche, by the numbers, High story ripoff that offers absolutely nothing new, and his story makes no logical sense. Which I completely ripped it apart. At how it, the the whole premise of the episode is a big ball of nonsense, uh, and its center is one of the worst ep characters that ever was invented in Star Trek ever. In fact, it was number one on my worst characters list, Vic Fontaine. And of course, that is a huge divide because I know that, that uh, that's opinion right there by itself is something that the fan base is divided on there's probably more people who like vic than hate him but there's they're out there the vic haters are out there i see you <laughs> and i hate him i think he's he's absolutely one of the worst characters and i don't need to see an episode about him and especially if they're gonna make it nonsensical cliche and stupid not fun not fun not 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 fun dumb anyway <laughs> so <laughs> so next um i will get into number two on my list uh getting back to the true winner of this countdown voyager <clears throat> we get into dark frontier <sighs> now again there is a sizable amount of people who hate this episode like my sister and and, and a couple others um, but there's way too many people who love this episode. Like another YouTuber I watch on a regular basis, who I, his opinion I really enjoy, which is why I won't bring up their name here. Uh, um, and I love their channel. But they rated Dark Frontier as one of their top three favorite episodes of Voyager. And then I've seen it on IMDb, it's in the top ten. It's in the top ten. This episode is pure shit. <laughs> not only does it defy canon in the most lazy and unintentional ways making this a prime example of bad horrible writing like the way it defies canon is 10 times worse than anything any new or trash star trek show discovery strange new worlds like fucking spock having a half sister is pale into comparison to the how they fucking treat canon in this episode. Not just the Borg and saying, oh, the parents were fucking investigating the Borg 20 years ago, even though Q just introduced the Borg to Starfleet eight years ago. Uh, not just that, but also, oh, hey, uh, it was the Borg Queen's plan all along to send 7 to 9 on Voyager. No, it wasn't! Anyone who has a brain and seen the episode Scorpion can clearly see that that absolutely was not the case in the slightest bit. Not in the slightest bit. It's not that they can't keep to the larger Star Trek canon. They can't even keep to the canon of their own damn show from one year ago. And plus it features the Borg Queen, acting like a Scooby-Doo villain, the Borg Queen, one of the worst characters invented um, for Star Trek. I can tolerate her in First Contact, but once you get into Voyager, she's what torpedoed. Like, Voyager was actually doing fairly well with the Borg until they introduced the Borg Queen. That's when they became a group of silly clowns. <laughs> and this is the episode that was the death nail. This is the one that really brought it all forth. This is a terrible, terrible episode. Terrible. Anyway. <laughs> um, and it treats me like I'm a, I'm a moron. I really feel that. I feel like when I'm watching this episode, the writers think I'm a complete idiot. Anyway. <clears throat> you want some controversy there? Let me give you some controversy. Let me get into my number one uh, episode of Star Trek that I hate, that everyone else seems to love. 
And that is Tuvix. Yeah, this is definitely my number one because I've seen this on so many top tens, so many people praising this episode, so many people analyzing this episode, uh, so, <laughs> so many people uh, saying this is one of the best. In fact, when I did my original top five worst episodes of Voyager 10 or so years ago, this is the one people really latched onto and attacked. And then I, someone said, hey, why don't you do a whole review to explain why you hate this episode? So I did. And I think that's got that's one of the videos with the most dislikes <laughs> out of all the videos that I made. And I got like so many comments arguing with me about this. So many. Um, and some people who do like paragraphs upon paragraphs of like nonsense that I would have to just eventually just ignore. Uh, <laughs> um, so people tend to like this episode. And I would say to anyone who loves this episode... Have you seen the Enterprise episode, Similitude? If not, please go check it out. Uh, it does what this episode tries to do well. This episode fails at what it tries to do, and a lot of people fail to recognize it because they drink the Kool-Aid that the episode's trying to tell you, trying to present you the situation. It's actually something different than what it is. Uh, similitude doesn't do that. Similitude is true to you. It, it, it actually presents the situation as it is. And it's just a much better acted, much better premise, much better episode that does the same moral dilemma that they attempted to do in Tuvix, which a lot of people seem to think they accomplished because they liked this episode. And they think, oh, it presents a thought-provoking moral dilemma. No, it fucking doesn't. It fucks it up. Similitude prevents the, uh, presents that moral dilemma and does a really good job at it. So if you haven't seen Similitude and you like TVX, that's my advice to you. Go watch Similitude. Much superior episode in every way, shape, or form. Now, other than just the simple fact that they tried to present this episode as Janeway murdering TVX when... Tuvix is not murdered. <laughs> he is a different form of Tuvok and Neelix, so he's just a different form of Tuvok and Neelix. So Neelix and Tuvok aren't dead, because where are their bodies? Where are their ashes? Where are their molecules? They're in Tuvix because they're still fucking alive. They've just taken a different form, and so they just revert Tuvix to his original form, which is two different people. So Tuvix, again, not dead. Where is his ashes? Where is his molecules? Where, where are they? They're in fucking Tuvok and Neelix because that's who he was! It's just a different form of the same person. I talked about this recently in my review for Enemy Within with uh, the evil Kirk, where Kirk is split into two. He's split into two halves, evil and good Kirk. When they combine both halves at the end of the episode, no one tries to say, Oh my god, they murdered the evil Kirk! No, they didn't. They just took him from one form and put him into another, just like they did with Tuvok and Neelix. That's point number one. But let's set that point aside uh let's say i'm completely wrong and full of shit janeway totally murdered two vox with two vix which isn't the case but let's just say for the sake of our argument that's the case she totally murdered him and i'm completely wrong about this this episode still sucks <laughs> because two vix is something my sister points out that two vix is acting completely out of character he's supposed to be a version of two and neelix yet he's the most selfish self-absorbed um egotistical character that there could ever be and he um Janeway when Janeway points out to Tuvix that uh you know Tuvok and Neelix would sacrifice themselves to save the ship or to save someone else and you're showing them no consideration she's 100% correct so and so they have to have and this is another reason why they bungle up the moral dilemma not just the stuff i mentioned before because as i said we're throwing that out the window and assuming i'm wrong which i'm not but we are <laughs> but even if we do that um then they still bungle it up because they have to make this character that is supposed to be an amalgamation of Tuvok and Neelix act completely nothing like Tuvok and Neelix for this dilemma to work, which is another reason why it completely fails. On top of that, like the whole premise is a silly premise. It should have been a comedy episode. In fact, that's what I thought it was when I first saw the commercial for it. That's what the uh, the writers actually originally intended this episode to, to be when they first uh, wrote it. To, and I think it would have not been that great of an episode 
done it to be fair but it, it would at least would have been consistent with its premise but by turning it into an over-the-top melodrama with Tuvix going around screaming you gotta live i want to live why are you killing me was what some of the dumbest shit i've ever seen <laughs> it's a Terrible episode it is by no means. It is definitely one of the worst of Voyager, and I'm surprised it didn't make my top ten worst of the entire franchise. I would have to revisit that. Probably make my. It would definitely make my top fifteen for sure, for sure. Uh, <laughs> but it is by no means a good episode. Not in any way, shape, or form. Even, as I said, even if you torpedo my whole argument and say I'm outright wrong, it is still one of the worst Star Trek episodes ever. Does not deserve to be in any top tens. Uh, absolutely hate this episode with a passion. I don't know why people would like this, especially if they've seen Similitude. Similitude actually pulls off this dilemma well because the Sim, the version of um, Trip Sim, is a separate person. It's not. So they are actually killing him, unlike this Tuvix thing. And he does change his mind when he tries to run away he because he is trip he has the same mentality he doesn't want enterprise to die which makes sense he's true to his character and they still pull off the dilemma well i like this bullshit in this episode but anyway <laughs> i think i've ranted about this episode enough that that is my number one episode i hate that everyone else seems to love. So that is it for my top 10 uh, episodes of uh, Star Trek that I hate, that everyone else seems to love. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, even if you didn't agree <laughs> with everything I said in this video. And be sure to check out my companion video to this, which I'll be releasing uh, in several days. The top 10 Star Trek episodes that everyone else hates then you're fine. <laughs> so we're just the opposite end of the spectrum here. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to um, check out my channel. And I do want to give a big shout out. Thank you for those who support me on Patreon uh, before I leave. Um, it really helps the channel going. It really helps me. And it's, yeah, absolutely cannot say how much uh i appreciate your support so um <laughs> and how much can more can i delay until this screen comes up okay <laughs> so anthony dinabectus ricky manny jester joel avals brian a alessandro miglesio norman buckwald stephen kennedy Britton berg allison fordyce and brandon halls thank you so much so much for your support and i am sorry if i bothered you with this, with this video but your support is so much appreciated and if you would like to support me on patreon the link is in the description below you get early access to videos and also access to my patreon only videos where i revisit episodes of the star trek that i have already reviewed uh so be sure to check out my channel even as if you don't want to support me on patreon even as a uh, subscriber also absolutely helps and has i do many more star trek videos and videos on other shows as well so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that and thanks a lot for watching